So greetings from Security First Networking World of HP Aruba. So I am Shobna, TME for Campus Switching. So with each release, we strive to enhance the security of enterprise networks by introducing new security features. So one such improvement included in the 1014 version is WAN Maxec Custom Ether Type for APOL. So this is a phase two of WAN Maxec feature introduced in 1013 release. So in this DOI session, let's learn more about this feature. So here is the list of acronyms that will be used in this session. Later on, you can check it. So first, let's start with the overview. So the general overview of the Maxic features that our CX switches support is provided here. So ranging from switch to host Maxic and then LAN Maxic that is between the two switches that is a point to point link. And then we have this WAN Maxic. So between two devices that are connected over a L2 network that are in geographically distributed locations. So we provide WAN Maxic, LAN Maxic, and switch to host Maxic in our CX switches. So here is the general overview of the WAN Maxic. So let's see about a brief introduction of WAN Maxic. The layer two connections over the WAN are encrypted by the use of this Maxic encryption standard. So WAN Maxic can ensure us connectionless data integrity, data origin authenticity, confidentiality, and then replay protection. So consider a WAN Maxic deployment where there is WAN Maxic devices connected in between with a lot of intermediate devices as well as WAN. So with WAN Maxic, we can establish a Maxic session between those Maxic capable devices in the distributed locations. So it is IEEE 802.1 AE standard base and it is extension to the Maxic to support the WAN and it is only supported in physical L2 ports. And it is part of CX advanced feature pack as is one of the advanced security feature. So we need the advanced feature pack for this feature to work. And it is supported in the following platforms, 8360. Newly, we have 6400 V2 module introduced as part of 10, 13,000 release, and then the 6300 platform. So what is new in this Maxic extensions for WAN? So as everyone knows, this WAN Maxic extends the Maxic security to WAN, and then it allows organizations to encrypt traffic between the geographically distributed locations. So what is new in this release? So we, we have seen about these Maxic extensions for WAN in 1013 release. The foremost is EPOL destination Mac. Next is tagged EPOL frames, clear tag mode, and bypass BPDU. So we have seen in detail about all these extensions in our 1013 release. So in this 1014 release, the new is custom ether type. So with this custom ether type feature, what we are getting to achieve. So prior to 1014 release, the WAN Maxic channel cannot be established over a network with a LAN Maxic in between the path. The reason being is both the Maxic protocols use the same ether type by default, that is triple AT. And WAN Maxic packets will be consumed by the LAN Maxic devices in between the path. So, having the existing LAN Maxic had challenges in using the WAN Maxic. To overcome the challenge, we have introduced the support of custom ether type, that is 876F. So, as part of the MK policy, we have new CLA sub option to configure this custom ether type 876F. So we can modify the default from triple eight E to eight seven six F in this release ten fourteen. So let's see in detail about this custom ether type. So let's understand the behavior prior to ten fourteen release. Only then we can learn about what is new in this ten fourteen release. So consider a WAN Maxec deployment where this WAN Maxec devices and they are connected over infrastructure having LAN Maxec device. 
that is land maxic is established between the land maxic peers so on top of it if you wanted to establish a van maxic so what is the problem here in achieving the van maxic so for a maxic session to establish we have the mka protocol exchange happening that is the maxic key agreement protocol so this maxic key agreement protocol is used for the establishment of maxic session and by default it uses the ether type triple h so when this mk packets reaches the land maxic device in between so this packet will be consumed by the land maxic device and it will not be forwarded to the actual van maxic peer so what happens here is the maxic session cannot establish because the mk packet itself is not been forwarded by the van maxic device so the reason being is since we are using the default ether type so that land maxic device in between will try to assume that those mk packets are for this device only so it will not forward those mk packets to the next stop so we will not be able to establish a van maxic session between the endpoints so that is the pre behavior prior to 1014 release so what is the new behavior with this 1014 release onwards so consider the van maxic devices here similarly there is a land maxic session established between the land maxic peers so we were using the default ether type triple a t for the land maxic ch channels so if you wanted to establish a van maxic channel between those devices so what we will do is we will try to create a custom ether type for the van maxic session to establish instead of using the default ether type triple a t that is h 76 f is the custom ether type so with this custom ether type the mk packets will be sent using the 876f custom ether type and since the land maxic device is listening on the ether type triple e when this 876f ether type packets are coming it will be forwarding those packets to the other end like means based on the destination map it will forward to the required destination so these packets can be forwarded without getting dropped by the in between land maxic devices so then we can establish the land maxx session between the van maxx capable devices so this is how we will be able to establish a van maxx channel using this custom ether type so even though we have the land maxx in between the path from the entire network so we can have any number of land maxx channels in between that will not hinder the connection of van maxx so here is the list of platforms supporting this van maxic so we have from the access to the core layer we have 6300 ranging from access to aggregation and then the 6400 v2 and in the core layer we have 8360 so it's not in all the skews of 6300 and 6400 v2 and 8360 we have the maxic capability only the selected skews are having the van maxic capability i have listed all the skews here and as well as the ports which are supporting the van maxic so the maxic is not supported in asic of these platforms it requires a specific five for it to work and those files are available only in this supported interfaces so when you are planning to incorporate van maxic in your deployment make sure these are the support interface you need to be using for it So let's see the use cases for this feature so most of the use cases are we have seen already with respect to the van maxic so we'll be continuing those use cases for this feature as well so consider a l2 deployment that is two flows are interconnected and it has been purely l2 based deployment so when we have the maxic session between the axis and then the aggregation or if we have the maxic session between the aggregation and the code so these are the land maxic that is point to point maxic sessions so when the customer in future wanted to have van maxic between the path of those access which previously it was not possible but with this custom ether type they can also establish a van maxic between those access switches so both the LAN maxic and then the van maxic can be deployed in the same 
enrollment. So next comes the interconnect using VXLAN. So consider a deployment where we have two flows interconnected over the VXLAN and we have established the VXLAN tunnel between the access VTIP and we have an extended access switches as well. So this deployment can be scalable from campus to DC interconnect or DC to DC interconnect as well with respect to the WAN MAXEC and then the LAN MAXEC. So if the existing deployment is using the LAN MAXEC between the access VTIP and then the aggregation layer or they are using the LAN MAXEC between the aggregation and then the core layer. Now, in future, if the customer wanted to deploy even the WAN MAXEC, it can be achievable using this custom ether type. So we have this MAXEC channel that is WAN MAXEC channel between the extended access switches and then we can have the VXLAN tunnel established between the access VTIPs and along with that to protect the access to aggregation or the aggregation to core layer, we have the LAN MAXEC channel established. So next will be the pseudo wire that is site interconnect using MPLS. So we have two site, site A and site B and we have the provider edge devices that is MPLS capable devices and there is a MPLS L2 VPN between these provider edges. So in MPLS network, we will not be guaranteed like there would be any MAXEC channel or not. They could be even a LAN MAXEC channel between the MPLS devices in a MPLS network. So with that, when we wanted to establish a WAN MAXEC channel between the sites, that is also possible. So we can have the WAN MAXEC protecting the data between the sites along with the MPLS L2 VPN as well. So this MPLS P devices should be third party devices which supports L2 VPN. So currently our CX portfolio will not be supporting the MPLS P devices. Next will be the CSFC's dual encryption that is MAXEC over IP6. So to shiftly provide the secure cyber security solutions that make use of commercial technologies and products, the National Security Agency's commercial cyber security strategy includes a CSFC that is commercial solution for classified. So this solution needs the use of two encryption technologies for the data that is traversing between two sites. So consider the site A and then the site B. So here the red network is the one without any encryption and then the gray network is only with a single encryption and then the black network is one with a dual encryption. So with the need for the security growing, these kind of dual encryption standards have been widely asked by the customers in the defense and then the finance vertical. So with that need, even our MAXEC can be able to achieve this along with both LAN MAXEC and then the WAN MAXEC. So consider there is a MAXEC channel established between the aggregation and then the core layer in the existing deployment with the point to point LAN MAXEC. So on top of it, we can have the WAN MAXEC session as well. So we can have the WAN MAXEC established between the access switches and then the data from the aggregation to core can be traversed over a LAN MAXEC channel and then the data between the two sites can be traversed over the IPsec network. So it is IPsec and then the MAXEC dual encryption being present in this environment. So this is one of the breakthrough for our CSFC solution where our switches can be educated for customers who are looking for CSFC deployment. So let's see the configuration for this feature. So the configuration is really simple. So as I said, this is a MK policy related feature. So we have to use the MK policy configuration context here. So under the MK policy configuration context, we have this EPOL ether type. So where we can 
configure the custom EPOL ether type as 876F. That is the only allowed custom ether type and default is triple eight E. So let's see the sample configuration required for achieving this feature. So I have given the sample configuration for two switches and it is the usual van maxer configuration on top of it we are trying to configure this custom ether type so the custom ether type configuration has to be same for the both the switches only then mk session can establish if there is a difference in the custom ether type so this switch will be listening in a different ether type and the other one will be sending the request in a different ether type so that is not supported so both of the switches has to be configured with the same ether type So here is a snippet of the MK policy VRSTP as well. And this is the same, like you have to go to a system MK policies context, and then you have to configure the equal ether type as the custom one 876F. So let's see the best practices to be followed for this feature. So the maxit should be enabled on links that could be prone to attacks like man in the middle or any hacking kind of attacks. So refrain from using maxic on links that are nearly or fully loaded. The reason being is when a link is nearly at this capacity, so the packet lock may occur due to the 38 byte overhead of a maxic header. So the maxic will have a 38 byte overhead in the data that is traversed between the peers. So it may create a traffic loss based on the rate of traffic we are trying to send between the peers. So currently our validation has been done only with our CX switches as van max peers and we have not yet validated with our third party devices. So it is advisable to use only CX switches as van max peers currently. So the point to be noted is maxic channel is destroyed and re-established on configuration change. So be it a configuration change in the MK policy or a configuration change in the maxic policy, it will result in the existing channel being destroyed and then the new channel will be established again. So you will also see a warning message when there is a live maxic session established on top of it if you try to do some configuration change in MK or maxic policy. Like consider my max succession is already established and I'm trying to change the default ether type. So the warning will show that the existing session will be restarted because we are trying to change the way the session is working. So it has to be restarted for that purpose and it may create a traffic drop because the session is getting re-established. So it is advisable to do the changes before establishing the max succession. So here is a quick demo about this feature. So before I go for the demo, let me explain the demo topology for you. So have two floors, floor A and floor B, and have a access to aggregation layer. Similarly, access to aggregation, or it can be also as a collapsed core as well. So between those floors, I wanted to establish a van max succession and then between the aggregation or core layer i wanted to establish the land max succession or we can consider the existing deployment that is having the land max between the core and aggregation layer and then if you wanted to establish a van max channel later on between the access layers so here is the config snippet that will help you understand what is the minimum configuration required for achieving this demo scenario. So in the access switches, I have configured the van max session. So I have configured the MK policy and the equal ether type as the custom one. Similarly, in the other side of the floor as well, I have configured the MK policy with the custom equal ether type and that MK policy has been applied to the access switches. 
So when it comes to the aggregations, which is I've configured the MK policy for the land max accession. And then I have applied that MK policy to the interfaces connecting between those four or aggregation switches. So the configuration is simple. You have to configure the MK policy, whether it is for the van maxic or it is for the land maxic. And then you have to create the maxic policy. Similarly, it is for the van maxic means you have to use the van maxic extensions for the maxic policy. If it is land maxic, we do not need those extensions. And both the MK and then the MaxEC policy will be applied to the interfaces. So, what will be the show command first you need to use for understanding this feature? Will be the MK status command. So, you can check the MK status command across all these features and you can see the difference in the MK policy configuration. Like in case of the van maxic peers, we will have this equal ether type configured as a custom one. And in case of land maxic peers, we will have the default ether type. And apart from that, we will have this MKA extensions for the van, like the equal destination MAC address. So those configurations will remain the same for the van maxic devices. But with respect to land maxic, we do not need those extensions. So first let's see the neighborship from the access to the access of the other flow. So here there is a neighborship between the aggregation switches or core switches because they have the land max accession established. So the data is secured. So the LLDP PPDUs can be passing between those devices. So the LLDP neighborship is formed between those flows, access or aggregation switches. But when we see the access which are we will not see the LDP neighborship. The reason being is we have the man max accession configured, but it is not formed yet. So here is the configuration for the land max in those aggregation switches. So we have configured the max policy and then the MK policy. So the same configuration is present even in the other side as well. So the configuration remains the same. So in both the sides of those aggregation switches. So that is a land max session. So let's see the session establishment. So the land max session is established between those floors, aggregation switches, and it is up and then retired state. So let's see the statistics as well, whether the packets are encrypted between the path. So you will see the statistics incremented as well, the encrypted packets. So now let's see the van maxic configuration in the access switches. So this van maxic configuration is present in the port that is connecting to the next stop that is the 8060 application. So I have configured the extensions for the van like bypass I triple A PPT, clear tag mode dot one Q, and then the custom equal destination MAC and then equal dot one Q tag. So those are the existing 1013 configurations for the fan max set. And I have applied that in the interface of the van max set peer. And you have to check whether the feature pack is installed as well. So even in the other end, the configuration is the same, except the destination MAC is different. And as you have seen in this configuration, I have not enabled the custom ether type. I'm using only the default ether type, triple AT. Since we are using the default ether type, the MK live peer list is empty because the MK session would not have been established as we are using the default ether type. It's same across the other side as well. So the MK status is down because we are using the default ether type. So now let's configure the MK policy with the custom ether type 876F. So 
since we are changing the NK policy in a live NK session, it will be re-established. But we have established only in this period. We have not yet configured the other side. So still the MaxX session will not be established. So it will still show it as down only. So it becomes important for us to configure in the other peer as well. So even though we have modified it, the MK session is not yet up. So let's do the similar configuration in the other peer. So we'll configure the custom ether type in this peer as well. So now the session will be re-established because of this change. So let's check the status of the MK session now. So now the live peer is identified because of this custom ether type and session is established successfully. So the session is up and then retired state. It means the maxx session is established between those van maxx peers. So even though we have the land maxx in between the flows. So let's validate the traffic as well. I try to do a ping from the floor A to floor B between those access switches in two networks and the ping is as well successful. So let's do a troubleshooting here. So for troubleshooting, I will be using the mirroring. So I'll be trying to monitor the interface that is enabled with the WAN maxic in the first access switch in the floor A. So the point to be noted here is where the mirroring and then the MACSEC is established. So MACSEC is working in the fight, but mirroring happens before it. So even though in the mirror packets, you'll be seeing the packet in the plain text, but the MAC packets will be actually encrypted after the mirroring has been completed. So that is uh, one of the troubleshooting point. You, you have to be noted it down because you may think it is the packets are not MACSEC encrypted because you are using mirror it, but only since the mirroring happens before the MaxEc packets are encrypted, that is the reason the packets are seen in the plain text. So similarly, I am capturing it in the aggregation switch as well. So here is the packet capture. So first, if you see here, the ones, the first side is the 6300 axis A capture. The other side is the Aggregation B capture. So the EPOIL MK packets are sent with the default ether type triple eight E. But if you see the capture in the other side in the floor B, you will not be able to see those MK packets sent from the access switch 6300 in flow A. The reason being is it will be consumed by the next op device and those MK packets, even though we are sending it from the access A, it will not be received in the floor B. So now we'll try to configure the custom ether type in MK, that is 876F. So the protocol, since it is using custom ether type, the Wireshark will not be displaying it as MK packet, but the protocol information will be visible. But when you try to capture it in the aggregation B, the packets will be received. So those MK packets, whatever we sent, so as it is, they are received in the aggregation we capture as well. So this is evident like the packets are sent from the floor A to floor B are received even though we have land maxic in between. So now let's try to do a data validation as well. So we will try to ping from the axis A to the axis B in the other side. So this is the ICMP packets that are sent from the axis A and we'll see whether those packets are received in the other side. Since the MaxX session is established over the access EA and then those packets are received over the aggregation B, so you will be seeing the ICMP packets in plain text in access EA, but once they are reached in the aggregation B, so those will packets will be the MaxX encrypted packets along with the 8021AE security tag. So you could see the security tag details here. 
and then the maxit adds the overhead of 32 bytes. That is the reason you will be seeing the data as 130 bytes here. So here is a snippet of the packet capture we discussed in the demo. So the packets are from the 6300 access in floor A to 6300 access in the floor B. So this MK packets you could see in the mirroring, it will be sent with the custom ether type 876F and then it will be received in the floor B access switches as well. So only then the MK session can get established between the WAN maxec peers. So when it comes to the data traffic validation and when you capture it from the 6300 switches, this 1151 port. So even though you try to do a mirroring and capture it, it will be present in the plain text as the ICMP packet, but it will be first MACSEC encrypted. So next when the packet is received in 8360, again it will be MACSEC encrypted because there is a LAN MACSEC session between those floors. So it will be this for this 8360 device, this MACSEC data from the 6300 device will be a data payload and then that will be encrypted again over a LAN max succession and once those packets are received by the 6400 in the floor B, so those packets will be first decrypted using LAN max and then it will be sent as a data payload to the 6300 access switches but it will be actually a max frame and then the 16 access which again will be decrypted. So it will be like the maxec over the maxec when the packets are really traversed between the floor A to floor B. And you can see the packet capture for one of the switch like from the aggregation 6400. So it will be a maxec frame. So with that, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you have any further queries, do reach out to us in our Ads community. Thank you all once again. Bye.